Hi. In the previous video, we discussed equality comparators, which simply evaluate if two input numbers equal each other. Recall that those circuits took advantage of the exclusive NOR operation to compare individual bits. In this video, we will explore inequality comparators, which go an extra step and identify which of the two inputs is larger. The operation becomes clear when we look at the circuit in the simulator. Whoa, not this screen. This is the gate level circuit, which we'll build up to in this lesson. Let's look instead at the device test circuit, which lets us see the overall operation. The first thing to notice is that the two input numbers A and B have three bits. This is a rare three-bit example. Most circuits in this course are four bits, but you already saw how large the internal circuit is just for three bits. To not lose the forest for the trees, we'll use three bits here to illustrate the concept. The pattern discussed can be extended to any number of bits. There are three output signals, which in this case are active high, one and only one will be active at any time. The active line will indicate whether A is smaller than B, larger than B, or equal to B. Let's test it out by setting B equal to 4. Now with A equal to 0, A is less than B, so this top line is active. In fact, any number I pick for A that is less than 4 will activate this top line. Then when I set A equal to 4, the equality line is activated, which is good news because 4 does equal 4. Finally, when I pick numbers larger than 4, this middle output is activated, which indicates that A is larger than B. So overall, the function of this device is relatively simple. Now, how can we build one? The top half of this slide just summarizes what we already saw in the simulator. The bottom half is where we'll start our design. Here's a simple question. Which is larger, 101 or 110? And more importantly, how can we tell? B is the larger number. The way we tell is by reading left to right, or most to least significant bit. The most significant bits are equal to each other. So we move on to evaluate the middle bits. Here, B is a 1 and A is 0. Therefore, B is the larger number, regardless of what the least significant bits are. This is simple with a numerical example, but it gets a little more complicated when we generalize it symbolically. First, let's define the two input numbers as A and B, each having bits 2 through 0, as shown here. A sub I will represent any bit within A. For example, if i is 0, then a sub 0 means we are referring to the least significant bit in a. And if i is 2, then a sub 2 means we are referring to the most significant bit. Another variable we'll define is x sub i. This represents whether the corresponding bits in a and b are equal. So if a2 and b2 are both zeros, then they are equal and x2 is a 1. As discussed last video, this one-bit equality operation can be defined with exclusive NOR logic. Shown here are three different ways to algebraically write that logic. As we'll see next slide, this last representation will be the most useful to us. But why care about defining x at all? Well, even though x is an intermediate variable and not part of our inputs or outputs, it is useful for simplifying our discussion and our circuit. The equation that determines whether A equals B overall can be written as X2 and X1 and X0. This shows us clearly that every corresponding bit must match in order for the overall numbers to be equivalent. The trickier part is identifying which number is larger. On this slide, let's explore how we would determine if A is greater than B. On the left side is the approach we would take in words. If A2 is greater than B2, then we immediately know that A is the larger number regardless of the other bits. For example, if A equals 100 and B equals 011, 
we only need to check that first bit to know that A is larger. Also, if A2 and B2 are equivalent, then check the middle bit. If A1 is greater than B1, that means A is the larger number overall. An example case for the second bullet point is A equals 0, 1, 1 and B equals 0, 0, 1. Finally, if both pairs of the more significant bits are equal, then check the least significant bit. If A0 is bigger than B0, then A is the larger number overall. An example case for this third bullet point is A equals 0, 1, 1 and B equals 0, 1, 0. In summary, if this bullet, or this bullet, or this bullet are true, then A is the larger number. Now let's convert that to Boolean algebra. The first bullet is represented by the expression A2 and B2 prime. This product term will only be true if A2 equals 1 and B2 equals 0. The second bullet is represented by X2 and A1 and B1 prime. The X2 indicates if the most significant bits are equivalent. If they aren't, then this whole product term goes to zero and does not matter. If they are equivalent, then A1, B1 prime indicates if A1 is larger than B1. And the pattern continues for the final bit. X2 and X1 are only true if the previous two pairs of bits are equal. A0 and B0 prime are only true if A0 equals 1 and B0 equals 0. Then the OR gates between all the product terms tell us that if any of these three cases are true, then overall A is bigger than B. Notice how useful this X variable is. It makes this equation much simpler to write and interpret. Also, notice why I said previously that this last expression for exclusive NOR will be the most useful. We can first evaluate equality signals through this expression and then borrow results from the A, B prime gates to help us with the inequality signals. Lastly, note that we can derive the equation for output A is less than B following the exact same logic, just with A and B interchanged. In other words, the equation will simply have the prime symbol moved from the B's to the A's. So, now we have equations for all three of the outputs and can convert those into logic gates. I have a slide here with the final circuit and equations, but I'll hop over to the simulator to demonstrate. Let's begin at the bottom. When will A equal B overall? Only when every corresponding bit is equal between A and B. In other words, only when all of the X values are true. So, we have a three input AND gate. These inputs trace back to each of the X values. This setup of NOT gates, AND gates, NOR gate performs the exclusive NOR operation to identify one bit equality. Now for the A is less than B output. This will be true in three cases. The first is if A2 is less than B2. That signal comes from this top wire. The AND gate clearly produces A2 prime ANDed with B2. Here we see the advantage of breaking apart the exclusive NOR operation. The second case is if A2 equals B2 and A1 is less than B1. A2 equals B2 is provided by this X2 wire. A1 is less than B1 is provided by this A1 prime and B1 wire. The AND gate ensures that both statements are true and that result is passed to the OR gate. Finally, the third case is if A2 equals B2, A1 equals B1, and A0 is less than B0. A2 equals B2 is provided by this X2 wire. A1 equals B1 is provided by this X1 wire. A0 is less than B0 is provided by this A0 prime and B0 wire. These three terms are anded together with the result passed into the OR gate. I won't walk through the A is greater than B logic because it's the same as just discussed, just with the roles of A and B reversed. Let's reflect on our design process because it certainly was not a standard approach. First, we define the purpose of this device. 
Then we used a numerical example to understand how we as humans would figure out a comparison. Then we generalized that approach by defining variables. Next, we wrote out our logic in words and symbols. Then we converted those words into Boolean equations. Next, we wired a circuit based on those equations, but we weren't done quite yet. We had to test the final device to make sure that it worked. With so many steps leading to the end product, that testing step becomes especially important. This design is not intuitive at first, but I hope you appreciate the elegance of the final pattern. We could extend this for more bits by adding more exclusive newer operations on the left and more pairs of AND gates in the middle. The advantages of this non-standard design approach are 1. Developing a pattern that can be extended and 2. Organizing the logic in a way that makes more sense to our human brains. The disadvantages include a more inefficient final circuit in terms of the total number of gates used and the resulting propagation delays through those several layers of gates.